So I did something that I swore that I was never going to do again. I bought myself a Windows PC, and I, I'm going to actually use Windows on it. Now, there are, are reasons why I did this, but let's first just get it out of the way. I hate that I had to do this. Absolutely despise that I had to do it, but I almost had no choice, or at least I felt like I had no choice. So... I just don't feel good about it, and I thought what I'd do is make a video about this and rant about it for a little while because, well, that's what I do. So, let's go ahead and jump in, but before we do, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help the channel. So, first off, let's talk about the why. Video editing on Linux is not as good as it should be. Now, you'll notice there that I was very careful with my words. I didn't say that it was bad. Caden Live is actually very good, and I'm very impressed. I'm constantly impressed, actually, at how good it is. It has a ton of features. It's constantly maintained. They're always adding new features, and for as often as they do add new features in KDE style, it's actually fairly stable. Now, fairly stable doesn't necessarily mean always stable, and unfortunately for me, it's not that Caden Live doesn't have all the features that I want. It does. It's that it's not stable enough. I constantly have problems with KDE on Wayland. And unfortunately, I can't go back to Xorg anymore because I have weird monitor setups. Now, that's not Caden Live's fault. I'm not blaming Caden Live, but it's the reality. I have problems with Caden Live in terms of things crashing all the times, with, with the timeline disappearing. I've had situations where I've saved a project come back and reloaded the project and have had 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 part of the video actually like missing like out of the middle which was really a weird bug and while a lot of these bugs get fixed eventually there's always new bugs and unfortunately like i said i make video for videos for you guys and i also do editing for other people every once in a while and i, I you know i use a video editor quite often and unfortunately i need that thing to be stable and when I mean stable, I mean like never breaks, like ever, like ever. Like I need like a 99.9999% uptime on my video editor. And Kaden Live can't offer that to me. Now there are other video editing solutions on Linux that I tried. I tried all of them. So don't go get in the comments and say that I should try this editor or that editor. I've tried them all. I tried, you know, shot cut and shot put or whatever they call. I I tried Olive. I I tried uh, DaVinci Resolve on Linux. I tried Lightworks or whatever it's called. I tried all of them. I tried Blender and I hate Blender with a passion. Not necessarily because it's bad, just because there's so many buttons and my ADD like ooh something shiny ooh ooh <laughs> you know what I mean. So I I can't use Blender and a lot of the other ones just are even worse than Caden Live when it comes to actual stability. So I have some issues when it comes to Caden Live or with video editing on Linux. So I looked for a solution or an alternative or whatever. And the, the solution that I came up with was getting a Windows PC and using Resolve on Windows. Now, if I had an NVIDIA card in my main PC, I probably would be able to use Resolve on Linux because Resolve does work on Linux. They do have it available for Linux and it's actually not that hard to install. Even though on OpenSUSE it's impossible uh, because of some weird dependency things. But it was easy enough to install in a distro box. And it actually did launch. And I actually did, a, I actually one of the podcasts that I edited, I edited all on Linux. And I was like, and, and I was proud. Like I, I, I messaged Nate on Discord like, hey, nana, nana, boo, boo, look at this. I edited the podcast on Linux in DaVinci Resolve. And I tweeted it out and, or I, or I uh, tweeted it out or whatever. And I was very proud of myself. And then I went to render and it crashed the whole PC. And then it did it again and again. And I was like, uh. now that again, is not DaVinci Resolve's problem. Or I guess it technically is. They just don't like AMD cards. So what I ended up actually having to do was buy this Windows PC and then use that to edit my videos. And I've been doing it now for a couple of weeks and I hate it. I, I hate it with a passion of a thousand burning suns. Now, if you use Windows uh, and you are, you know, you f you're forced to use Windows or maybe you prefer to use Windows, whatever the case may be, that's fine for you. Like, like I don't want to disparage anybody for having to use Windows or even choosing to use Windows because a lot of people choose to use Windows because there's games on there that they need or software that they need 
or they just don't like you know Linux or whatever. You know that's fine. We're all you know human beings with our own rights to make our own choices, and that's the way that it should be. Uh, that being said, I can't stand Windows. Like like I knew this going in that I hated Windows, but using it for a couple of weeks now has reminded me why. Like like there are so many things that are just so stupid that you have to think like how can a, des a developer of any caliber new new developer or experienced developer ever think that this particular thing is a good idea and there's so many of those th that it just blows my mind so for example like being forced to reboot after an update and not just like you know it pops up and says hey would you you, you need to reboot but just rebooting like no warning whatsoever I I like if, if I have the computer on all the time behind me because it just like sleeps or hibernates or whatever it's just easier that way, and I had some things open and it rebooted while it was just back there sleeping, which is not you know that big of a deal. But I had things open, right? It, it, there should be an inhibitor there, like there is kind of on Linux, like to keep the monitors to go to sleep. There's an inhibitor to keep them from going to sleep. There there should be something there that like that says, hey, this guy has something open. Don't reboot right now. Wait until he's here or around to actually make the choice. It's stupid. Now, that's just one one thing. Another one is all the fucking ads. Like, people freaked the fuck out when, when Canonical put an, uh, like a, a, an Amazon thing in the Ubuntu panel or whatever. People freaked out. And, like, it was there for a long time and people got used to it and then it went away, with, you know, whatever. On Windows, you can't go a minute without seeing an advertisement. And it's not just like they're there, but they pop up. It's like it's like the pop-ups on the internet that you see all the time inside of your operating system. Like, again, they can't possibly be making that much money on these advertisements to make it worthwhile to piss off all of their users. And if you're not pissed off because of this, what is wrong with you? Like, you can't turn this... I mean... Technically, you can turn it off. Like, you can go use Chris Titus's tool or whatever. I use that. I still have advertisements. And the other day, I popped open to the the notification center to see what notifications I missed. That was a mistake. It had a VPN ad in there. Like, a VPN ad? What? Why? Like, like this is an operating system, not an advertising space. What is wrong with you? It's so stupid. And on top of that, the the resource usage of Windows is just, like, what the fuck are you doing? It uses six gigabytes on idle. On idle, it's not doing anything. Like that's and that granted that that's at boot, and then it kind of goes down a little bit, like at four to like four gig gigabytes. But like we make fun of GNOME for using a gigabyte on Linux, like because that, that, that that's like a memory hog, and Windows is like ah, hold my beer. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like what the f what is wrong with you people? Why can't you design an operating system that is actually good? Now, I freely admit that I'm biased. I love when I love I almost said I love Windows. No, <laughs> no, Matt. No, I love Linux a lot. Like, like it's it's you know, it could be a lifestyle for me. Like I've made you know multiple friends in the Linux community. I use it full time. I'm, I sit at this computer for my day job and it's 100 percent on Linux and I love Linux. Everybody knows this. So I'm biased. I'll freely admit to that bias. And I understand that there are situations where people have to use Windows. But the more I use it, the more I don't understand how you can't do everything in your power to get away from this thing. Right now, a lot of that times that you don't have any thing in your ability to do that like you you don't have the power in that situation you have to wait for developers to make your games work on linux or you have to wait for developers to make this piece of software available on linux or whatever right i understand that i hate that that's true <laughs> like i hate it it's true because windows should die like 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 windows should not exist it's so bad it should be retired and they should, you know, start over or just make themselves a Linux distribution, which sounds like a, you know, a travesty because they'd probably ruin it eventually. Um, but, you know, their Windows should just not exist anymore. Like, like it, it is so astonishingly bad to use. And I'm not just like talking the UI. Like the UI is not bad. Like, like it, it in places it's bad, but overall, like on, on a surface level, 
it's actually quite nice to look at. Like, yeah, you know, it has all these this transparency, and the menus are fine, and you know, they, like the, they mastered rounded corners in most places. Like, something that Linux desktop environments haven't been able to do is actually make every window have rounded corners. Windows did that for again for the most part. There are a few exceptions, but for, you know, they've done a much better job than Linux has in terms of rounded corners, and you know, it it looks fairly nice and then you kind of delve deeper and you come across some context menus that look like they're developed in 1998 and you're like yeah that's not a good experience right but okay like this is an old operating system there's a lot of legacy stuff and i can i can deal with that and then you is that an ad that's an ad oh is that an ad that's an ad why is that thing popping up why can't that pop-up be dismissed why can't i assign my default browser and why after an update, after I finally did figure out how to set my default browser, did you change it back to Edge? Like, that's not okay. I mean, like, I understand the whole licensing thing where I don't actually own the operating system. I understand that, you know, from a legal standpoint, whatever, it's not the way I would choose to do business. It's not the way I choose to do business with other people who make operating systems. I prefer the open source method, you know, or whatever. But they can't feasibly think that making their operating system this bad is good for business. Like, they, they can't think that, well, you know what? People are stuck with us, therefore we can make it as bad as possible, and they can't leave. Like, okay, sure, some people won't care. Like, like some people are just so used to Windows, and or they only use it for a pure appliance purposes, where they just use a browser. They don't see any of the nonsense, whatever. That's my mom, basically. And, you know... She's never going to go to Linux because she doesn't like Linux and, you know, doesn't care for change, which is fine. So there's those people. But the people who actually do delve into the operating system and see the garbage that's just lying around, I don't understand how Microsoft can think, well, you know, we can piss those people off as much as we want and they'll do nothing. Eventually, there has to come a point where, yeah... Those people, those people who are actually technologically minded enough to install Linux will eventually get sick of Windows shit and move on. Like they'll buy Mac or they'll, they'll install Linux, whatever happens to be the case. They'll do something to get away from using this royal piece of shit. You can tell that I'm fired up about this. Now, because, now this isn't a new problem. I've always hated Windows. And I'm not even always like that's not even a true statement. I was OK with Windows for a very long time. It had a lot of games on it. You know, the UI was OK. You know, Windows 10 was, you know, a pretty good operating system when I was on it when it first came out. And, you know, it, yeah, they, they, they obviously had some really bad releases along the line, like Windows 8 was bad, Windows Vista was bad. But, you know, back in the day, I didn't have maybe I didn't know any better because you know linux was there but also linux wasn't as good back then as it is now like it's much easier to use linux now than it was then so i'm you know i'm kind of spoiled to be able to use an operating system that doesn't have all of this nonsense and going back has just reminded me it's it, it's it's gotten into my head again about how just atrociously bad and it's actually like i stopped using windows full time in 2017 um, at the beginning of 2017. So we're going on, what, like seven years, maybe over seven years since the last time I used Windows full time. And I don't remember it being this bad. Like it has to, it feels like it's just ginormously worse. Now, again, there's that bias again where I use Linux all the time. So going back, of course, it feels way worse. But if I try to be objective about it, it still feels like it's gotten atrociously worse than it was before. And it just, I don't know, I don't know, I don't even know what the point of this video is other than me wanting to rant about how much I hate having to use Windows. And that's the thing is like, the thing, the thing about it is, is like I'm using DaVinci Resolve on Windows and man, is it good. <laughs> like, it is so good. Like it blows Canon Live out of the water when it comes to video editing. Now, that's not saying anything about the Canon Live guys. They're doing their best with what they have and, and they've done a, an extraordinary job doing what they have but the m difference between them and a professional audio uh, you know a video editing tool is just amazing right it, it, it's astonishing because it is so good it doesn't crash obviously I, I haven't had any crashes or what so you know whatsoever and 
I didn't realize until I had it how many tools that are in DaVinci Resolve that are actually kind of cool. Like, you know, better transitions, a way better effects, you know, all the, all of these things, better audio editing and stuff like that. It's just kind of built in uh, transcripts and all that stuff. Now, you can do a lot of the transcripting stuff in Kaden Live, but it was way easier to do in uh, DaVinci Resolve. There's just the fact that it's just so good has led me to keep Windows. <laughs> and that's horrible. <laughs> like, I, I wish it wasn't so good so I could just, you know, I can put up with Kaden Live because, you know, it's not, the difference isn't that, you know, great. But that's not true, unfortunately. DaVinci Resolve is good enough for me to stay on Windows on that PC. Now, that's all I do on Windows. I will not do anything else. I tr actually did... Uh, play Sims for a little while when I first got the PC because I haven't been able to play Sims on Linux for quite some time. But uh, that went by the wayside pretty fast as well. I now just switch into the, my use my KVM switch to switch to the Windows PC, do my editing, swing it back over the uh, network through uh, Samba, and uh, upload it on, Win on Linux. <laughs> I spend as little amount of time in Windows as possible and until I can get a, a, a NVIDIA graphics card for my main PC, or DaVinci Resolve creates a flat pack or makes it work better with a, with AMD or whatever, I'm unfortunately going to have to be in this situation, and I just want to talk about it for a little while. So that is it for this one. Uh, if you want to write some sympathy for me, you can do so in the comment section below. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. Just like all of these fine people, thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon. You guys are all absolutely awesome I, i'm i'm doing the vanny white things again i'm i'm really got to stop emulating her uh people in not not in this country probably like who the hell is vanna white <laughs> anyways uh thank you so much for your support i truly do appreciate it if you guys support me on patreon or youtube or our kofi or whatever i truly do appreciate it you guys are awesome if you want to do so you can join those people uh, with the links in the video description below or you can head on over to the shop which is available at shop at the .org. there you'll find a whole bunch of awesome merchandise and all that goes directly towards helping me make more videos for you guys so thank you for watching i'll see you next time i promise that i'm not going to switch to windows full time i promise like i promise